So I made a video the other night uh, when I got back from Esalen, um, and it, you know it was all very general and kind of vague, and um, I wanted to go into more detail because um, well really it's the only thing I can think about right now. Uh, the whole week I was there, I didn't read or write, but once for ten minutes. Um, you know, in other words, I got there for a few days and didn't even cross my mind to take the book out of my bag. Um, I brought along uh, Tehard Deschardins' um, The Phenomenon of, or The Human Phenomenon. But um, I tried to read it for ten minutes, and I just couldn't literally strain my eyes enough to uh, read for very long. And I, and I, I comprehended meaning, certainly, as I scanned the, the page, but I just, you know, for the first time, recognized how little meaning is actually there without a great deal of effort, a great deal of strain. Um, whereas, you know, for the prior uh, few days, I just been open to the world around me, uh, less strained, more relaxed, uh, didn't have any pressures or um, uh, I didn't have a requirement that was, that was due. I didn't have a, a job I had to take care of, or, or, you know, I still had certain tasks to take care of, uh, people to take care of. I mean, it wasn't just a free-for-all. Uh, you know, this wasn't a resort. It was a retreat. Um, but... I'm finding it difficult, uh, I found it difficult while I was there, and I'm finding it more difficult now that I'm back to think about philosophy, or to read philosophy, or to talk about philosophy, which is why I didn't, or haven't made any videos about anything. I mean, I haven't been back that, uh, that long yet, but, uh, you know, I had to read a paper for class this week, and, um, it just didn't feel the same. Um, I didn't feel as attached to the meaning which the words produced. I understood it, but I didn't feel as though it were true. I mean, it certainly it was it was right. Uh, I, I didn't disagree with it. I wouldn't argue. Um, it just didn't. Well, it didn't matter for the state of mind that I seem to be in now. Um, words don't seem to matter. I've just, I've been looking at people, really, and just interacting with, with people much more freely. Um, in a sense, less uh, self-consciously, um, without first considering myself, in other words. I, I experience them directly, as though they were myself. Not um, as though I'm merged with them, but as though any encounter with them is just, uh, you know, a dialogue with another, um, another I am, another myself. Um, and it's so easy. It's so simple. It's, uh, you know, not as though it was, it was difficult for me before, and I had all these anxieties about facing uh, other people, I mean, not not so much, but it was still facing other people, other, others, you know, and it's not so much that they're others anymore, and it's not just people, I mean, while I was at Esalen, a, uh, a butterfly was kind of just on the ground right before the, uh, the bridge that goes over a creek that runs down to the ocean. And, uh, it was kind of just still on the ground. And this was the middle of the night, mind you. And it just had its wings folded like this. They weren't moving at all. So I figured it, it may have died there. So I just reached down and kind of flipped it in the wings, and it didn't move at all. It kind of just actually tilted over. So I tried to pick it up, and as soon as I did, its, it's feet started, you know, wiggling a lot. Um, so I thought, oh, it's still alive. I put it back down, and it started flapping, but it flapped such that it turned over on its back and just kind of 
fluttered across the ground, um, not able to turn itself over. Um, and then it stopped again, and uh, after a few seconds, I reached down and picked it up again. And then it, you know, its legs started going crazy again, uh, and it was kind of moving its wings a lot, so I put it back down again, and it started doing the same thing. It turned over on its back and was fluttering. Um, and, you know, I, I couldn't figure out whether it was just, uh, maybe it was just born and it just came out of the chrysalis and was not yet able to fly, it was learning. I mean, I don't know, do butterflies just fly right out um, based on pure instinct or do they need to learn how to do this? Uh, I don't know. And, you know, maybe it was hurt, maybe it was dying. Uh, maybe, you know, it was a really old butterfly, I don't know. And, uh, I, I mean, just to, to run across that occurring doesn't, you know, it's nothing, it's not a supernatural occurrence or anything. But, uh, this was the night, the last night we were there, uh, Thursday evening, um, or actually early Friday morning, but it was very symbolic at that particular time based on what I had been thinking prior, like as we walk down the hill back to the um, the room or the lodge that we're staying in. Because there right before the bridge, which, you know, takes you back or across to the other side, uh, was this, this this being, this creature that was either, I don't know, either trying to learn to fly or about to die. Um, and in a sense it was both at least for me, because I left before I found out what happened. I was, it was late, and I was actually going up to uh, go sleep, and um, I couldn't stay. So I don't know what that butterfly really was, and the reason it was symbolic is because, you know, all of us who were there for a week um, went specifically to transform ourselves. You know, I mean, a uh, program that's pretty much uh, centered around transforming consciousness, um, transforming our philosophical outlook, uh, our cosmological relationship to the universe, and therefore, thereby changing our consciousness. Um, so we went to this place to change what we think it means to be a human being. And yet, you know, we do this not just for ourselves, but so we can literally give something to the world. Uh, a world that's in pretty dire straits, that, that really could use something. You know, nobody thinks that the people in charge in Washington are uh, really the people, the wealthy bankers in charge, that they, they have our interests in mind or in heart. Uh, everybody's pretty pessimistic about that, and yet we still think that they're the ones that have to come up with the answers. Maybe though that the, you know, the systems of, of institutional bureaucracy that got us into these problems are not the same institutions that are going to get us out of them. Um, something new must be born from within, and so here I am walking across the bridge to go to sleep the final night of my stay in this this otherworldly place um, and I run across this being trying to cross the bridge to get home back to where it, it had came from uh, but unsure whether it would learn to fly or it would die pretty much the state of the planet at the moment uh, and you know over the course of the past uh, few years maybe five or even ten years uh, it seems that we've very slowly been building towards this moment um, so it's not just literally now but it's the past leading up to now and the immediate future but the moment that we're talking about of, of complete and sudden transformation has been getting closer and closer, more and more focused. Um, it's almost